be there at an hour before and you alone you will be singing you alone you will be praying you alone you will be doing a lot of things and by that time you will be gaining a lot of things remember I stood here that other Sunday and I said it takes one person not with the wife, not with the kids, not with the uncle, not with any person, that it takes one person who will stand and say, I, here I am, Lord. I want to work for you. I want to work with you. I want to walk with you. I want to fight the things that you're fighting. I want to hate the things you hate. And love everything that you love. Amen. If you are still saying there is no one inside the building, then there is no church. Church is you. Amen. You were supposed to be inside the building and start the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember when Jesus said, You are Peter. And what is going to be built? The church. He never said Peter with other people. You are the rock. And I'm going to build the church. Yes. Don't wait for somebody. When you find the doors open, enter in. Pray. Most of the time we 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 we, we disguise as if we are doing things that we are really not doing them. <laughs> That's why sometimes we 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 find ourselves singing the songs name. We bow before you, but we're standing. Who are we fooling? I, I will repeat this every time because it, it, it is so, so, so hating to see people who are saying we are Christians and they sing songs that does not even resemble what they are singing. You know, sometimes when we sing that song, they, I change it when I, I, I reach that point and I feel like I might not bow. Then I sing, we sing before you. We sing before the throne. I think it's better. I'm singing and standing. And like when I say I bow before you and I know I even the head is is it's searching who can Hey, look at that suit. Look at the pastor today is wearing. Look at what this. Look at those chairs. Look at this. Look at this. No, they are not sanitizing today. Look at. But you are singing the song. We bow before your throne. I think we need to change as Christians. Amen. 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 I am continuing with the very same message today. And I'm going to stress in more, most of the things so that we can understand exactly what we're supposed to do. And I will give the very same examples, but I will be going to this time. This is the message I prepared. And from this, I was thinking I will be given much time. And I heard it's only 10 minutes. Then I was like, you know, I have to just cut it short now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, let me greet um, all the, the, the people who are following us on their Facebook page. And all the, the people who are our members that, are, that failed to attend today. Those who are in their comfort zones. at their houses watching us 
be greeted. And the people at Inyaboya, Mozambique, Maputo, welcome as we are going to listen to the word of God. I believe Pastor Novella is waiting for us there. And on the 16th, we will be hitting the road. Amen. Amen. Pastor Kamara, can you pray for us? Amen. Building a kingdom of obedience, obedient sons and daughters. This was the message that was given to us last that other Sunday, and we were supposed to do a marathon on that. Is it a marathon? No. Wet fun. Yeah, the marathon of wet. <laughs> wet fun. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I, I said to people, we have to be serious when it comes to the things of God. God is looking for one person. So when somebody whom you are standing with Decide early in the morning to say, I'm not going. You are not that person. Yeah. You have to bath and go to church. Amen. If, if you are having kids that are old enough to can choose, if they decide to say, today we are not going, you are not those kids. Remember, you, you, you chose to follow Jesus before the kids were there. Amen. You chose to follow Jesus before the husband was there or the wife. You chose to follow Jesus not because your uncle told you to follow Jesus. Not because your parents forced you to follow Jesus, but you chose. Amen. And you were alone when you chose. When the word was preached to you, you were alone when you had to decide. No one pushed you. No one pointed a firearm on you and said, if you don't do this, then you are dying. You chose. And you were alone. Why do you now decide to be decided by other people whether to do things or not to do things. Mm. Obedience starts with one person who obey what is said, what is commanded, Amen. and it starts with you. Not with somebody else. Don't mention another person. When I say it starts with you, then it starts with you. It cannot start with me with mantra jani, no. And it cannot start with mantra jani and me. It start with her or it start with me. When I have to bow down in my corner, at my corner, there in my house, I have to do it first alone. Then they will learn from me. This is what we're supposed to do. Remember one thing, when you feel hungry, it's not somebody's stomach that is feeling hungry, it's you. When you are hit by ulcers be be because you are not eating, it's not somebody's stomach that is filled with uh, ulcers, it's you. So, who is supposed to eat, you or the other person, it's you. Who is supposed to decide whether to eat or not to eat? It's you. Amen. Take it just like that when it comes to the things of God. When you, when you wake up early in the morning, don't wake up until somebody decides for you. Mm -hmm. You wake up and say, I am going to 
change. Come rain, come whatever, I am going to change. Are you aware? I, I even put it on my status and say, are you, are you, are you aware that uh, uh, there are a lot of people living today? There is no rain eh, even where they are staying. <laughs> but some of them, they have pasted even on their status to say, yo, there, this rain is raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Why? They don't want to come to church, but because they know. They have predicted on the television that there will be heavy rain. Then they said, yeah, no, there is a heavy rain and it's raining cats and dogs because they want to sit, sit at home. You are not doing somebody a favor. You are doing yourself a favor. When you wake up early in the morning, don't wait for somebody to decide what to do, what to wear, how to walk, what to do. Say, you, you just have to say, Lord, guide me. Yeah. I want to do what you want me to do. Amen. I want to behave the way you want me to behave. Amen. I want to say what you want me to say. Amen. I don't want to conform. Mm. Obeying God. That does not start with two people. That is a crowd. But it starts with one person who chooses to follow and carefully do what the Lord is saying. It starts with one person who humbles himself and say, Lord, I don't have anything except the heart that I'm giving back unto you. Mm. Use me. It starts with one person who say, Lord, I want to hate all the things that you hate and love everything that you love. Mm. It's one person. It starts with one person who say, Lord, I want to be holy. Just as you are holy. Mm -hmm. It's not with one person who want to say, I will pray every time. Not because I have other people who are praying. Not because there is a, a, a formalized prayer meetings. I will pray. We have a lot of people, uh, uh, he mentioned it if uh, Minister Joel uh, while he was uh, 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 leading us in intercession. There are a lot of people who are losing it when it comes to the things that were supposed to have received by this time. Why? They were praying before and then they said, we don't see the, 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 the fruits of what we were praying for, it's taking long. Mm -hmm. Then they leave the, 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 their positions. Yeah. Who is failing them? Is it God? No. God is still promising, should you obey me, you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. And all the generation that will follow after you, you it will be blessed. Amen. So, if ever you don't get what you are praying for. It's because you moved. You shifted. Your waiting is no longer a waiting. I don't know what you are doing. You are far away from waiting. You are doing something else. God is looking for one person. Who will be holy? Not because there is other people who are holy around them. Are you aware there are a lot of people who are coming from villages? When they arrive in Jobe, Cape Town, Durban, wherever, they change. Because no one knows them there. No one knows that they are, they are saved. No one knows that they are Christians. No one knows that they once been a Christian or what. So 
So they change. Those people they used to walk like, you know, you, you have to see that these people actually are Christians. But when they reach the urban areas, now they change. They've got their style of walking. They've got even the trousers dropping down so that they can be like the people they are around them. God is looking for somebody who will say, Here I am, Lord. I want to be holy as you have commanded that we have to be holy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not waiting for somebody else. Here I am alone. God is looking for somebody who will work hard at church. Not because there are other people who are working hard. When you arrive at church, you just check what is it that I can do here. Then you continue to win it. You don't wait for somebody to, to, to make a command. Hey, come on, go and take that chair and put it there. Take these drums and put them there. You don't wait for that. You just stand there at the back and watch. That thing needs to be moved and put there. Because the keyboard is there to be seen that side. Immediately when you arrive inside the building, you know exactly what to do. You just continue doing what you think is good and acceptable before the Lord. Amen. God is looking for one person who will stand up and preach the word of God. One person who will never wait for the pastor to say, here is the prepared pulpit, go and... A person who will never wait for a formalized pulpit or whatever, or formalized gathering. A person who will say, I have the phone, and I will use it to preach the gospel. Amen. What if you will never get that chance to stand like me and preach the word of God? Do you want to wait up until you die? How many souls are dying waiting for you to preach? And God has given you that phone. God has given you that laptop. God has given you that tablet. What are you doing? You are still waiting for the pastor to say, Hi, Pastor Lysine, come in front and then you dish out the word of God. No. You are already blessed. To can do it. Some of you, your, 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 your social media is so quiet when it comes to the things of God. So, 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 so quiet as if you are not even Christians. But the Lord has blessed you with the, the, the fastest phone ever. The 4G, when it comes to the memory, the memory of running the programs inside. And you got one terabyte of the internal uh, memory, but you are not using it for the things of God. Mm -hmm. How many people are holding that? We call it for all name. How many people are holding that phone and say, if ever I can get a smartphone, mm -hmm. there is a word there that one I hear me. And all he has is that for all and you cannot send a message to everyone. You have the smartphone that can go to a, a, a Facebook, that can advertise anything that you want to do, but you're not doing it. So quiet. Building a kingdom of obedient sons and daughters. Still alright here. Are all the schools okay here? 
while you are obeying God. God is looking for one person who will identify himself by the word of God, not by the group of people or the crowd. You will never identify yourself by we as what what. You will be saying, I am licensed and a Christian serving God. A good example we find it in the Bible. Abraham. Who is called our father in faith. Why he obeyed. He followed, carefully followed and do as he was commanded. At first, he was commanded, go out. Mm. Number two, give. The only that we have, give. And he did it. And he was blessed. And the 
very same Lord that created you. But now you are giving an excuse to say, I won't go because it, it raining cats and dogs. Sometimes when it suits us, man, we wake up early in the morning, whether it rains or whatever, we just go like, ah, ah, ah. We, we, we console ourselves with them. Ah, ah, we want to go out. It suits us. We want to go out, but it's raining. We go like, yeah, hey, what's for our more and jump? Hey, I today, I we will we will we will we will we will uh, have more plants. We will have more fruits. We will have while going out and it's raining. Come a time where we're supposed to gather with the saints. We go like, no, I cannot go. It's raining cats and dogs. While it's only showers. When it rains, cats and dogs for real. We we, we go like, no. These are just blessings, let me go. Because we want to do what we think is good for us. Genesis 22, 15 up to 18. Let us read this one. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. 16. I make a vow by my own name. A vow by my own name. And when the Lord make a vow, he don't change. Now he's telling Abraham here, I make a vow by my own name. The Lord is speaking that I will richly bless you because you did this and did not keep back your only son from me. 17. I promise that I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky and all grain of sands along the seashore, your descendants will conquer their enemies. Who are these descendants that conquer the enemy? Are we conquering the enemy? It starts with the obeying. First, I am obeying. 18. All the nation will ask me to bless them. I have blessed your descendants. All because you obeyed my command. Mm. Your descendants will conquer their enemies. Why? Because you obeyed. I will richly bless you. Why? Because you obeyed my command. It starts with obeying God. Don't go crying unto the Lord and say, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless You are blessed as you obey him. You don't have to go crying unto the Lord for blessings. They will overtake you. Amen. But as you obey him first, you have to go down humble yourself, obey him, do as he commands, then you will be blessed. Stop crying for blessings. Stop comparing yourself with other people. They are obeying God. Start obeying God. Then you will be blessed. Then they are the ones who will be saying, I wish I can be like him. I wish I can drive like him. I wish I can have such a mansion like him. It's because it started with obeying. Wherever you will be walking, wherever you will be, they will be like giving you as an example in everything. We only know 
This person who obeyed God Amen. and he is blessed. Amen. Mm. Abraham, in the foreign countries where God was sending him, he identified himself by the commands of God, not by where he was living. He had to tell me reflect on the commands of God and he obeyed in the foreign land. Another good example is Job. Job was a blessed person, highly favored. He was blessed with everything. And I believe even kings used to go and bow to him, asking for more of the things that he had. Because he was rich at the richest for obeying God, following all his commands. Job obeyed God even when his wife and friends visited him where he was sitting, trying to convince him to curse God. But listen at the end what he was saying, for I know that my redeemer liveth. After all that he went through, after all the trying by the friends, trying by the wife, trying by the sickness, but he stood and said, For I know my redeemer liveth. How many people in pain that can say that? Some of you, or some of us, when we lose a phone inside the building where church is, we will never attend that church again. We will be casting it in the building and, 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 and say, we will never put our foot there any longer. Just by a mere loss of a phone, Or can I give this as an example? Some of you, you come with your scarf team, you say, tape away, you call it a tape away. <laughs> hey, try to lose that thing, I'm telling you, you will never enter the gate at home. <laughs> God is looking for somebody who will obey him. Amen. A person who will say, whether the pastor is there or he is not there, whether my wife or husband is there or not there, whether my parents are there or not there, whether I'm losing my fortune or not, whether I, they, they are stealing from me, whether anything is happening, I don't care what matters to me is, I will obey the Lord. Because he's the one who supplied me with everything that I need. Amen. You know sometimes we sit and try for the smallest thing while the Lord is preparing for a bigger thing. You sit and worry for a top away while God is preparing for a, a, a building where you can store things for other people Amen. and gain money, make business out of it. Amen. You are crying for a top away to carry the stuff to work. While he's preparing for a building where you can store other people's things and make money. Amen. Do you see the difference? Amen. A stuff team store only your food. That you are to carry and eat at well. Mm -hmm. God is preparing for a building where you can store things of other people and gain money out of it. And you're crying for a top 
go away that was lost inside the church up until you say, I will never set my foot there. Sure. They stole my top away. What is a top away? <laughs> God is looking for somebody who will say, Lord, use me. No matter what is happening around me, with all the people that I have, no matter what is happening, use me. Look at what happened with Job. He lost his sons and daughters. He lost his livestock. He lost everything. And he was not seated as a poor man. The dogs licking on the wounds. Look at the person who was seen as the richest, now sitting there. The dogs are licking. You cry for a trip away. He was having everything. And he could supply everyone. And he lost. But he still, he still had the courage to say, my redeemer did that. With the story of Job, we learn that everything can vanish. Everything can work against us. But we have to still gain courage to serve God. To obey Him. To work for Him. To fear Him. We have to stand and declare and say, He is our sole provider in everything that we need while still on earth. Let us see the story of Noah. Are you aware? If you are not aware, let me make you aware. <clears throat> Noah and his family, or let me just say Noah. Noah, he is the one who has produced the nation that we call nations today. All the nations that are coming from them. Do you want to hear that? Genesis 7, 21, 23. <clears throat> Genesis 7. <clears throat> I want to show you that when you obey God, or when we obey God, we will be blessed beyond expectations. We, we, we might be thinking, we might be thinking, if we say we are blessed, is when we have a bus that will carry all the people. God is looking beyond that, far beyond that. Seven, chapter 7, Genesis 21 to 23.
destroyed every living thing that was upon the face of the earth. Mm. And men and animals and the creeping things and the birds of the heavens mm. were destroyed. Hey, hey, let us listen to this one. Listen to the one that is coming now. What is going? Please just leave everything that we are doing. Listen to what is going to say now. Only know. Hey. Remain alive. Mm. And those who were with him in the ark. Mm. Only the one that obeyed God Amen. was alive. Amen. Save him and his family. Amen. It started with no one. Noah obeyed God in the foreign land. He identified himself and said, I am not like them and I will never be them. He identified himself to a point where he said, even if I can go to Sodom, even if I can live in Gomorrah, even if I can live anywhere, I will be who I am unto the Lord. I will never change. Amen. Things will never change me. Amen. We have a lot of people, when they are blessed, they forget. When you call them, hey, can, can, can you come and lead us in intercession? No, I won't be there. I'm driving to Devon. Mm. <laughs> what? Driving blessed to Devon, protection, provision. By the same God that you are saying, I cannot. I'm driving to. Let me read this verse. Genesis 6, verse 9. Noah was a precious man, blameless among the people of his time. He walked with God. Amen. A precious man. Blameless among not why he is with the people who are blessed, not why he is with the people who are called the children of God, not why he is with the among the people of his time. So, meaning it was a number of people and different kinds of people that he was living in, but he remained that precious man. When you, when you reach Dobek, you are that kind of a person who is not even known. You are a submarine. You just go down under. Mm -hmm. They will look for you and the phone does not exist. <laughs> Mostly on a Saturday, the phone does not <laughs> When you call, you, you will ask yourself, did I ever change the number of this person? No, I don't remember editing. But the number does not exist. On a Saturday, you call on a Monday. Now you can get up. Ah, oh, hey, Pastor, I was, I was, hey, I was too busy. <laughs> These people of these days, they can block you, eh? and, the, and the, the, the phone will just go. The number does not exist. <laughs> 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 and you will ask yourself, what is going on with this number? Did I ever edit it? No, you didn't. And here we are, out of him, 
serving God. Amen. 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 Noah chose to carefully follow the command of God and obey Him even in the, the, the country where sin was food and drink. Sin was not a problem. It was like taking a sip on the water. It was like taking a sip of water, like by the glass. It was just like that. It, it, it's like it's not sin most to drink water. So to them, sin in the in the country where he was, Noah, it, it, it was like just like that. Sin was like taking a, a, a glass of water and drinking. No one will arrest you for that. It was like as if they are going for a party to, 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 to cook like, like last Sunday when you cook and eat. It was like that. No one can come here and say, hey, hey, who told you to kill this cow? It was just like that. But he remained faithful. He, he, he obeyed God there amongst them. And this is to show us that it is possible. You know the time you will stand in front of God and be judged, you will never hear an excuse. With these people that I'm giving you as, a, as an example, you will never have an excuse. If you think cloth is what can make you not to attend the gathering of the saints, or oh, to obey God, I'm telling you, you will never have an excuse in front of God when he has to judge you. There are people who are saving God without love. Mm. There are people who go and fellowship without food. Their only hope is when I go back, I wish somebody can give me along the way, give me something. Yeah. But they are coming from the garden of the saints. When you are sitting there and say, I am afraid I might fall in front of the people, so I will never go there, I'm hungry. You will never hear an excuse, I'm telling you. Yeah. And you will never go with your husband. You will never go with your wife. You will never give an excuse as my uncle this or my mom this. You will never give an excuse of I was poor, I was not having a phone, I was not having a car, I could have reached Mozambique, I could have reached Malawi, I could have... You will never give any excuse. Mm. I told you, you have people that are around you that they don't even know that you are a Christian, but you want to go to Mozambique and preach. Is that okay? You have you have people that you are working with that don't even know that you are a Christian, but you want to come and stand in front of us and preach. So you are in. Wherever you are, 
waking, wherever you walk, wherever you sit, wherever you sleep, wherever. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't conform to the standard of this world. When you find other people doing something else that is not in line with what you believe, just stand and tell them, I don't do that. I'm a child of God. Prepared pulpit and a prepared gatherings. 
so that you can preach. Start where you can. Mm -hmm. As a child of God, make it a point every day to carefully follow and do according to the commands. Mm -hmm. And enjoy the blessings that will also go to the generation to come. Amen. They will say, but Peter it is his generation, this one. Makita Shavela from who he is. And by that time, Makita Shavela from who he is, is no longer there. But the generation is mentioning him. And that other generation mentioning him. Just like we mentioning Abraham. Lastly, choose to obey God no matter what. All those, all the people who obeyed God in Old Testament, in New Testament, they were blessed. And the people who are obeying God now, they are blessed. People who will obey Him, they will be blessed. Mm. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, not tomorrow, not in the future, now. If you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine. So says the Lord. Call it that verse. Does it say what I was saying? Just read it. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice in truth and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own peculiar position mm. and treasure from among and above all peoples, for all the earth is mine. Up, 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 among and above all the nations, you will be a peculiar <coughs> possession. Mm. So, meaning, you will be like Israel, selected out of all the nations, and be set aside. Hmm. And God will be blessing you. Meaning, his eyes will be very close unto you, looking that no one disturb you. Yeah. He will take you very close to him, to see that you are blessed going out. Blessed coming in, blessed everywhere you go. He will put you close to see that not even an evil spirit will disturb anything that concerns you. Amen. Mm. The last verse, Deuteronomy. Okay, second last. Deuteronomy 6, verse 24. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive. As is the case today. Do you want to be blessed? Amen. Do you want to be always prosper? Amen. There is prospering now and punish. There is always prosper. Mm -hmm. If you want to always prosper, obey God. All is decree. You will always prosper. Amen. The last verse as we stand up. I want us to read this one while standing. Exodus 24, verse 7. The covenant was read. And at the end, people will 
test. <laughs> Let us hear what the verse is saying there. And please pay carefully, pay your, your, your attention in this verse. Carefully hear it. Chapter 24, verse, verse 7. seven. Then he took the book of the covenant. Uh -huh. He took the book of the covenant. Mm. And he read in the hearing of the people. He read it in front of the people. And they said. And they said after reading. All that the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. We will do. Mm. And we will be obedient. Mm. Myself. Here is the book of the covenant. I am opening it, and I want to hear you confessing. As an individual, Amen. don't wait and listen to the group. What are you saying alone? Mm. Mark 16. He said to them, I'm the one who's going to read the uh, minister, don't worry about it. Don't worry, I will read this one. <laughs> Mark 16 verse 15. He said to them, go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel to the whole human race. After he took the covenant and read it, what did the people say? We will obey and do it. Here is the command. Go ye unto all the world. Preach my gospel unto all the people. He has given you the whole world in your phone via the social media and you are still waiting for a prepared pulpit where you will say you are preaching to the baby speaking person, you are preaching to the Guru speaking person, you are preaching to the Tonga speaking person, you are preaching to the vendor speaking person, you are... He is not talking about that. He has given you the whole world, America, in your phone. Mozambique in your phone, Zimbabwe in your phone. What are you doing with that world? Are you preaching to it? You got it in your phone, but all you are doing is setting, sending the emojis. <laughs> Looking at the videos other people have posted from TikTok. The whole thing with your 40 gig. That's the only thing that you can do. Hence, you have the whole world in your phone. Just go, just go, invite a lot of people, whether he is saved or not saved. Invite them, preach to them. You would have saved your life and that person's life. Are you going to do it? I'm not waiting for your response. You are responding from the people. <laughs> Obeying, I said, it's not about the crowd. It's about you. And you are me. <clears throat> As for me, I will 